Hi, my name is Pete Scazzaro. I want to welcome you today to the Emotionally Healthy Leader Podcast. So good to be with you. And our title, our theme uh, for this week's podcast is called Sharpening Your Decision Making, Part 1, The Blessings of Boundaries. So actually, it's going to be a two or three part series around sharpening your decision making. And this podcast actually came about in my interaction with pastors and leaders, again, around the world and uh, doing many case studies and talking with folks and realizing, yes, decision making is something we're doing every day and carries quite a bit of complexity. And what's surprising to me is how often uh, we make decisions without a great deal of thought or prayer, uh, a bit sloppy or unaware of the enormous gravities of our yeses and our noes. And, and when we make poor decisions or flippant decisions uh, without a recognition of the level of gravity of some of those decisions in terms of uh, how it fills our lives, uh, the consequences are just vast and there's a ripple effect and we end up cleaning up messes uh, for quite a long time. And then we find ourselves in one, three, five years, again, uh, having made some poor decisions, cleaning up messes and trying to get back to where we started from. And so I've been doing a lot of thinking around this question of decision making, kind of like 201, pondering, studying. I'm still in my process. And uh, if I could call this another title for this podcast, it would be Discerning the Voice of God. Uh, level 201. And so I want to lay on this first part of this Sharpening Your Decision podcast, I want to lay a foundation around Jesus' life in particular and around the temptations and testings that he experienced, uh, not just in the desert, but throughout his ministry to seduce him and get him off track to make poor decisions. Uh, It comes to all of us. And uh, the kind of boundaries he had to respect in order to say a strong yes to God. So uh, we're going to look primarily at Jesus uh, because embracing these boundaries given by God uh, to us are the primary ways that we do grow in power and authority and wisdom and maturity and revelation of God. You know, it's Jesus himself said a student is not above above his teacher and a servant's not above their master. Uh, And so uh, in this process, we're going to follow him. Uh, as he sorts out and discerns the voice of God uh, through his many decisions he's making throughout his earthly ministry. Next week, or next podcast, we'll get into the issue of Consolations and Desolations 201, and then possibly on a third podcast around the issue of discretion, waiting, and answer some of the questions you may have. In fact, I want to invite you to send to me questions you have around decisions uh, you're making uh, and discernment. Uh, send it to askpete at emotionallyhealthy.org, and I will perhaps integrate that question or concern as I gather them up into a third podcast. And the second thing is, there's a a second opportunity for you is this Thursday, uh, June 15th, uh, we're running a leadership one-day event called called Reimagine a New Scorecard for Success, 12 to 4 Eastern Time. And uh, registration will be closing on Wednesday, June 14th at 3 p.m. Uh, but I want to invite you to uh, come, uh, send in a case study around a decision-making uh, situation you're facing today. And I will be doing a number of case studies as well as talking about reimagining a new scorecard for success. Again, registration is going to close at 3 p.m. on Wednesday of uh, this week, June uh, 14th. But uh, you can download it uh, afterwards and watch it uh, perhaps with your team. So again, go to emotionallyhealthy.org slash one day for that opportunity. So with that, let's dive into this question of boundaries and the blessings of boundaries if we, again, do it God's way. So uh, Jesus, in the very his very baptism, uh, he was praying, it says, and as he was praying, heavens open, the Holy Spirit descends on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice from heaven speaks, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. And uh, it's in, right here in this initial text, as he's launching into his ministry, we see the issue of boundaries, because he's referred to as God's son, whom uh, the Father loves, and it calls attention to the nature of his mission. You see, he's He's connected to the Father. He's a son of the Father. And therefore, there are boundaries in the exercise of his power. 
in his earthly ministry because he's under the Father. And so his, his whole mission and his purpose is spelled out in relation to God with reference to Scripture, as Scripture lays out his purpose to die and rise again for the sins of the world. But the notion of boundaries is determined by his surrender to God's purpose, and the devil's going to test him in this. And so in the same way you uh, are a son or daughter of a living God, been chosen by him, you're loved, and you hopefully by God's grace, have joined in God's purpose in the world. God's doing something in the world. But within God's large purpose in the world, each of us has a unique, unrepeatable place in that plan. Each one of us has a particular role to serve within that larger plan of God. Again, each one of us is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And it unfolds in a process over time in different uh, seasons. I like the word sealed orders. You have been given a sealed order from God of your purpose on earth within God's larger plan. And that word sealed orders comes from, you know, in in ancient times, they refer to specific written instructions that were given, for example, to a captain of a ship regarding his or her destination or mission. In the same way, God hands to you and hands to me sealed orders that we are to do and uh, we're to say yes and surrender those sealed orders. But that requires that we also deal with issues of boundaries and say healthy no's. Now, what's incredible uh, is that like Jesus, you and I, we've been given power. We've been given authority. We've been given gifts. We've been given uh, experiences and energy and callings and resources to fulfill our sealed orders in the world. And like Jesus, we have a deep destiny. You've got a deep destiny. And God has given you a unique way to live out those sealed orders in the world, regardless of what your role might be and different roles you may carry to this day. But there are boundaries to the exercise of your power. Uh, And so that's the work of discernment or decision-making. This is why sharpening it is so important. And so The issue of boundaries is a very serious one. And as we make decisions as leaders, it's it's, it's a grave work because what can happen is the seeds of God in us for our sealed orders can get choked by life's worries and riches and pleasures and not mature. And so we see in Jesus the issue of boundaries coming up right being tested immediately by the devil in the wilderness. And Jesus is tested. Now, it's interesting, isn't it, that the Hebrew tradition, the Old Testament, makes really clear that uh, folks' faithfulness to God is proven by testing. And so, for example, we see in Genesis 22, God tests Abraham to sacrifice his son. But then God ends the test when he says, now I know you fear God. We see it in Exodus 16, 4, when God rains down bread from heaven, you know, one day at a time. And he says, God says that I may test them where they will follow my instructions. We see in 2 Chronicles 32, God tests Hezekiah to know what's within his heart. We see it in the story of Job, where Satan receives permission from God to take away everything Job has. And it's a test to reveal Job's integrity or faith or honesty. Will he trust God or will he curse God? And so, and actually, in in, uh, ancient time, rabbis understood the word for tempt or test can also be the same word in Hebrew for exalt. In other words, They understood that God never exalts a person without first tempting them. And they use the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for that. In other words, uh, God has a great plan for you. God's got a, uh, again, a sealed order for you. God's got a work for you to do on earth while you are alive. But uh, part of that is there is testing, seasons, and times and to humble us, to discipline us, to mature us, but also to exalt you so God can bestow greater power, authority, revelation to you and the riches of his goodness. And so that's why I'm calling this podcast, the subtitle is The Blessing of Boundaries. There are enormous blessings in boundaries when we surrender to them, even though we may not understand them. So again, Jesus, that Jesus receives, in a sense, this calling from the Father and his baptism, and then immediately the, the devil seeks to twist and, you know, twist that calling and, and get Jesus to ignore the boundaries of the relationship he has with the Father, the constraints of that relationship. And so we've got three tests, and I'm going to use the stories and uh, the story of Luke's gospel. The first test, the, the devil comes and says, turn these stones to bread. And he tempts Jesus to exercise his power 
apart from God. Now, Jesus can turn those stones to bread, obviously, but uh, the temptation is rather than follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and, and trust God the Father to supply all of his needs, all God's promises throughout Scripture. He'll take care of all of our needs. But Jesus could relieve his own hunger by exercising his power to serve his own ends. And uh, the devil's basically encouraging Jesus to use his power to meet his own needs and assert his own independence from God. And Jesus replies, no, humans do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I mean, here's the, here's the so so here's the first boundary, is that I don't use my power uh, inappropriately to meet my own needs, uh, but rather I trust in the Father to meet my needs along the way. Now, the most obvious thing, I, I you know, application for me, and I see for many of us who are vocational pastors or leaders uh, around the world, is we we need more money. We, we, we can do a few gigs on the side and, and make a few extra dollars and have a greater sense of security. And not that it's always a bad thing at all, but sometimes, again, we do it and it's a crossing of a boundary because it gets us off of the focus which God has for us. Not that I'm against that by any means, I think it can be a great idea. I can get busy and overcommitted and anxious doing things to make things happen. Um, again, using my power, crossing a boundary inappropriately. Uh, I can say yes to people's invitations to do things uh, because I don't want to disappoint them. Uh, I, I've, the temptation, I, I've heard this repeatedly from folks to, uh, to get engaged in social media on a large level because uh, everyone else is doing it. I want to grow my ministry. Uh, and so folks get off their sealed orders uh, that God's given them sometimes by an overemphasis or commitment to engage in social media around the world with people. Or uh, I start envying or coveting another person's ministry. And I want to get things moving. So I use my power, again, inappropriately, to meet my need to feel like I'm not a loser. And uh, let's get things going. Let's get let's get this thing hopping. Uh, or, you know, I and I've, I started making a list of all the times I've turned these stones to bread inappropriately, whether it was rushing to launch a new congregation out of fear that time's going to run out, or expanding leadership development really fast, uh, and actually receiving an infusion of cash to scale things quickly um, and hiring folks out of impatience. Uh, and again, using my power, crossing that God-given boundary and almost killed me. Listen, I've been told uh, by one you know, wise mentor consultant that Pete, you're a racehorse on steroids. And uh, in terms of my visions and dreams, I. Because you're like a Walt Disney, you know, Walt Disney, they say, died with a box of new ideas and visions. And uh, that is a gift. I recognize some of my creativity is a wonderful thing. Uh, it's a great thing, but it's also an enormous danger uh, when I cross lines that God's not asked me to cross lines. And I use my God-given power and gifts uh, inappropriately, almost, again, independent of God. The Pharisees in Jesus' day... Uh, they crossed boundaries inappropriately, and they got into status-seeking and self-promotion. Uh, Jesus said, woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the seats of honor uh, and the first, getting first greetings in the marketplace. Uh, and they crossed into a boundary that Jesus was inappropriate, and they, they were missing the purpose of God for their lives. And, and he goes, you, in fact, he, he accused the Pharisees of crossing boundaries with money. And they wrapped it up in God. He says, inside, he goes, you're full of greed. And says the Pharisees who loved the money sneered at Jesus. And uh, again, wealth and money is a temptation to find prestige and security apart from God. And all of us have to wrestle with that for all of our lives. The second test then to, to, in the invitation to, again, violate boundaries, the test and temptation uh, for Jesus when the devil leads him to a high place and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and says, I'll give you all their authority and splendor, if you'll bow to me for just a moment. And uh, you know, basically, the devil says, give me your allegiance just for a moment. Uh, deny your identity as a son or daughter of God and your sealed orders. Just cross that boundary, and I'll give you super success fast. Uh, it'll be shabby, but it'll be authority, my authority for you. What's so interesting about that is Jesus, when he, because he says no to Satan's quick success there in that text, when he begins his ministry, he begins to teach and preach and heal and drive out demons. 
But the big theme is they noted he, when he spoke, he spoke with authority. And the, the very thing the devil promised Jesus was authority. But it comes to Jesus as a result of resisting the devil and respecting the Father's boundaries. And, uh, and uh, so then the result is Jesus exercises great power and authority against the evil one. So again, quick success is a shabby substitute. And the third test is the devil says to Jesus, jump down from the from, uh, you know, top of the temple and God's going to catch you. He quotes Psalm 91. And he, again, he's seeking to deflect Jesus from the Father's purpose for him, his sealed orders, to die for the sins of humanity in, a, uh, in this three-year ministry. And he wants to get, he's tempting Jesus to avoid slow, to avoid suffering, to avoid death. Uh, and again, very often God's purposes are fulfilled through suffering and death and are slow. Uh, and it's the boundary of the mustard seed. But Jesus is discerns correctly the nature of his mission from the Father. And over and against, he, he refuses to swallow the counterfeits offered him by the devil. Because the devil offers all of us a competing agenda, even though it may be religious. Uh, but the, Jesus recognized that devil's strategy was an attempt to deflect him from God's purpose for his life. So I can't tell you how often um, leaders, and especially pastors, staff, wanting to help, wanting to please other folks, wander away from their particular sealed orders, even stop asking, what are, what's God uniquely given me to do? What's the yes I'm to say to his purpose and my participation and alignment with his purpose in the world? And they end up in, folks end up in commitments to because they said yes to help out other people without having done a, a real prayerful discernment. And as a result, they say, oh, I can squeeze it in. They find out, oh my gosh, it wasn't a squeeze in. This is taking up a lot more time, energy, space, a lot more messy than I ever imagined. Again, because there wasn't a healthy respect of the, of the gravity and the importance of discerning what are my sealed orders God's given me at this season of my life to do. And then in light of that, what are some of the boundaries around me uh, that I may need to make sure that I don't cross even though there are opportunities that I could take and look like it'll expand God's kingdom, but they're not for me because of the unique, particular sealed orders that I've been given. The Father's boundaries and constraints that they gave, he gave to Jesus, as a result, Jesus disappointed uh, a lot of people. He disappointed the people from his hometown in Nazareth uh, because... They wanted him to stay in Nazareth and, and or just minister to the, to the people of Israel. And uh, they didn't want Jesus going out to the Gentiles and, and ministering all over the place. And the people in Capernaum, they wanted Jesus to stay uh, there. Everyone's looking for you in Capernaum. Jesus said, I must preach the good news to the other towns also, for I was sent for that purpose. He, he, he affirms the boundaries of his ministry. In Jesus' case, unlike a local church pastor or a parachurch leader, uh, he was an itinerant person within the you know, within the uh, confines of a certain geographical space um, in ancient Israel. But he uses this word, I must, often, in, uh, especially in the Gospel of Luke, or I must do this, and because he had such a sense of my, his sealed orders. And therefore, he was able to say a strong yes and a strong no. Uh, and then even the 12 disciples, he was constantly disappointing them. They want to build three booths for him with the Moses, Elijah, and, and himself in the Mount of Transfiguration. And, you know, no, no. I mean, he disappointed the Pharisees and scribes. They didn't understand what he was about. Uh, they called him a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And, and so, you see, it's not a heavy yoke, this discernment process. Uh, if I embrace the gravitas of my life as one of listening and discernment, sharpening my decision making is life and death actually uh and so for jesus his life was staying aligned with the father in deep communion with the father uh, and we see in jesus in, in the gospels this, this life of prayer uh of rhythms of deep communion for discerning the will of god and it says in luke 5 16 he often withdrew to lonely places to pray and uh so we see whether he is uh at his baptism He's in prayer when the Father, heaven opens and the Father speaks to him that you are my son whom I love. Uh, before he chooses the 12 disciples and say a year has passed, many scholars believe, maybe even a year and a half, he spends the whole night in prayer of discernment, listening in deep communion with the Father about 
who are the 12, uh, one of whom is Judas. And then, interesting, in, in Luke 8, Luke 9, verse 18, it says, when Jesus was praying alone with his disciples near him, he asked the disciples, who do crowds say that I am? But it's out of a place of deep communion with the Father, he finally introduces the topic to the 12 disciples about the crucifixion, about him being the Messiah, about the fact that he's going to be, you know, killed and rejected and then rise again. But it's the boundary he'd been waiting to tell them that level of revelation and news. Even the conversations we have, there are boundaries that we're not to have them yet with certain people at certain, you know, in certain situations. It comes out of deep communion uh, with Jesus. Uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, we, we learn such a, so much there because we see Jesus discerning. We see Jesus sharpening his decision-making ability. We see him struggling to get clarity about what's God have for him. And he goes, Father, if it's possible for this cup to pass from me, let it pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. But he gets clarity about the Father's purpose. It happened in prayer. And then he resolves to embrace it. So fascinating. So you know that's going to be happening to you. You know it's going to be happening to me. I don't know God, what are you saying? Am I to drink this cup? Am I to do this? He gets the clarity. He does it. The disciples were, were supposed to be praying with him, the three disciples. And they were not in deep communion with the Father, and they're sleeping. And as a result, they get agitated. They get confused when Jesus gets arrested. They don't understand the progression of events that are unfolding around them. They can't even imagine how God's purpose might be served by Jesus' betrayal and arrest. They're dull, scripture says. They're, they're asleep and they make bad decisions. They keep making bad decisions. You know, Peter pulls out a sword and cuts off the servants of the high priest's ear. Uh, you know, he, totally miss, missing that verse when Jesus said, love your enemies. Uh, but listen, each of us has a particular role in which to serve God within his larger plan in the world. You have sealed orders. Your life is incredibly important. And so just as Jesus' aim was not to follow his own agenda, but it was to fulfill the purpose of God for which he was sent. Thus, there were boundaries. Mary's aim was not to follow her own agenda, but to fulfill the purpose of God, which he had for her. So we observe her pondering and treasuring and waiting on this ever unfolding purpose of God and her role in it. But we see her embracing boundaries. Think of Elizabeth. Her aim was not to follow her own agenda. It was to fulfill the purpose of God for which she was sent, the whole birthing of John the Baptist. Thus, there were boundaries around her life. Same thing with Simeon and Anna. Uh, their aim was not to follow their own agenda, but to fulfill the purpose of God for which they were sent. And we see them doing that. Listen, our entire culture in the West resists the idea of boundaries. We've called it limits a lot, haven't we? We want to break the speed of sound again and again, bigger, better, faster. I don't like limits. I don't like boundaries. Um, they make me feel caged in. It's been my greatest spiritual challenge. Uh, in fact, I find that virtually every thoughtful leader who has got engaged with us over time will say to me, Pete, it is my greatest spiritual challenge, limits. Well, this uh, podcast, at least this text of Jesus in the wilderness, in the desert with being tempted by the devil, which in some ways encapsulates all of our temptations and all of life, yes, is closely related to rebellion. It's all about boundaries because Satan puts in our mind that boundary, God's holding back on you. He's ruining your life with his commands. He's not your friend. He's your enemy. Run from him. Do it yourself. Basically, take your, use your power, even though it may have been given, up, given to you by God, to make things happen. But we, we're invited. The Lord invites us to surrender to his transcendence, his bigness. He's bigger than anything you've ever imagined you know, Psalm 115, our God's in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, Romans 11. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. And yes, God built you and God built me to dream. We've got visions of a preferred future all around us. It's a great thing. But God's free and any attempt by us to control God will always end in disaster. 
and we're invited to trust in the goodness of God. Is he good? Yes. Is he faithful? Yes. Will he provide for us? Absolutely. Can you trust him? Yes. And we learn from Jesus that boundaries offer us so many gifts, so many blessings. I like what those, again, uh, ancient rabbis said that testing by God is about being exalted by God. And it makes sense, doesn't it? He tests us to know what's in our heart as he did for the uh, Israelites in the wilderness for over 40 years, Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, so that he can entrust us with greater power and revelation. But these boundaries protect us so we don't hurt ourselves and others. Uh, they teach us humility that we're not in charge. Uh, and they are the primary ways that we grow in power, in authority, in wisdom, in maturity, in revelation. Wow. Listen, think of John the Baptist again, who embraced the boundary God gave him. And he walked in a joy and a contentment. It says, you know, he, he said, you know, they said, John, uh, you know, everyone's going over to Jesus, do something. And John says, a person can receive only what's given him or her from heaven. And he says, I'm full of joy when I hear the bridegroom's voice and that joy is mine. It's now complete. And he, he's overflowing with joy is the word there in Greek. It's, it's a deep contentment. He's tapped into a calmness, into a centeredness in the midst of all the chaos around him going on politically, economically, spiritually in the temple. His crowds are going down, but he has no resentment, no envy, no bitterness. And uh, he's just full of joy. A person can receive only what's given him or her from heaven. He understands God's boundaries. And boy, was he boundaried, wasn't he? Short six-month ministry in the desert, eating wild locusts and honey and dressed a certain way. I mean, what a boundary life and ministry. However, he embraced it, surrendered to do what God had for him. And he had sealed orders a purpose. You have sealed orders. We have nobody like you on the face of the earth. You're unrepeatable. John the Baptist rejected any temptation to cross over those boundaries and just surrender to our, a good God and, uh, and did the Father's will. Said a strong yes, as he said, a strong no to other temptations around him. Wow. And may God give you grace to do the same. So let me invite you again to send in questions you may have around decision-making and discernment in your life that you, especially that you think may apply to lots of other people around the world who are pastors and leaders. Send it to askpete at emotionallyhealthy.org. That's askpete at emotionallyhealthy.org. And then again, uh, this Thursday on June 15th, we're going to have a leadership one-day event from 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern time around reimagining a new scorecard for success. And uh, we'll help you doing some case studies, etc. So let me invite you uh, to go to emotionallyhealthy.org slash one day. That's emotionallyhealthy.org slash one day. And the deadline will be uh, this Wednesday at 3 p.m. Uh, on June 14th. So again, you can download it for later. You can listen to it. I strongly recommend you check that out. If you're listening to this podcast much later, go on our website. Look for the next time this will be offered and again, go to emotionallyhealthy.org slash one day. So may the Lord bless you. May you hear God's invitation for you today on what is the strong yes he's inviting you to say yes to in light of your sealed orders. And may God grant you wisdom and discernment as you see the boundaries that God is saying to you, do not cross over those. That's not for you at this season of your life. Blessings to you. Have a wonderful day. God bless.